Today, we are going to be taking an in-depth look at the Minecraft Forestry mod. If you are new here, my name is Javier, and I aim to give you a full and easy to follow tutorial on all things modded Minecraft. If you do have any further questions or there is something I may have missed, you can either join the Discord where we have a designated channel for modded help, or just leave a comment down below and I will try my best to answer any queries you may have. Link to the Discord will be in the description. So without further ado, let's get into the video. This series on the Forestry mod is going to be split into a few different parts. This first part is an introduction to the mod and we will be covering world generation, basic tools and machines, and energy production. If you are looking for more details on farms and bee, tree and butterfly breeding, those will be in a separate video that will be coming out a week after this one. The first thing you'll notice when you spawn is the Forester's Manual in your inventory. This is a fairly useful guide to the mod and it is split into seven sections, but hopefully you won't be needing this if you've got me instead. If you do happen to lose your Forester's Manual, you can easily make another one using a book and a honey drop or a sapling or a butterfly. Now, there are three new ores and four new ingots that Forestry adds to the game, and these are Appetite, which is mainly used to make fertilizer, and this only spawns at Y level 64 and above, which means you're going to hunt down some mountains to find this one. Once you do, however, you'll notice it spawns in very large veins, and this will work with the Fortune enchant as well, so once you do find it, you're going to have no issue at all finding more of it. In order to actually make fertilizer from Appetite, you're just going to simply put one Appetite in the middle and two sand above it, or you can use Ash in a eight radius around the appetite, and you're gonna get 16. Copper and tin can both be found easily underground in a similar Y level to iron. Lastly, bronze is made by combining tin and copper together and cannot be mined directly. This is done by putting three copper and one tin in a crafting grid as so. You will also see around the world that there are seven new hives containing bees. These are a forest hive, which is found in forest biomes attached to trees. The meadows hive, which can be found in meadows and plains biomes, and these will be on the ground. When you break the hive, you will get a princess and a number of drones. Now, these can be pristine or ignoble stock of princesses. Ignoble stock will actually genetically decay over generations in captivity, so you are actually best off by hunting down the pristine ones, which are just spawning at a lower rate. These ones will never genetically decay. You have forest, meadows, modest, tropical, marshy, and wintry as per the hive. Forest drones are going to make honeycombs, and in once used in a centrifuge, these honeycombs are going to give you beeswax and honey drops. The same goes for meadows drones. Modest bees are going to give you a parched comb, which again will give you a honey drop and beeswax when used in a centrifuge. The tropical drones will give you a silky comb, and these can be used in a centrifuge to get honey drops and silky propolis. The silky propolis can be used with pollen clusters to make slime balls. It can also be used to make bitumous peat and genetic filters. You can also use the silky propolis in a centrifuge to get silk wisps and propolis. The wintry bees will give you a frozen comb, and this will give you a honey drop, beeswax, snowballs, and crystalline pollen clusters. If you look in your JEI, you can also see the percentages that it has a chance to drop. So you can see here with the frozen combs, it has an 80% chance to centrifuge out beeswax, 70% for honey drops, 40% for snowballs, and a 20% chance to give crystalline pollen clusters. Next up, we're gonna go over some basic tools. The pipette is a really useful item, and this is made with two panes of glass and a piece of wool. This can actually pick up small amounts of liquid up to a whole bucket's full, and you can right-click this on liquid storage in any sort of machines, and it can take it out. So if you have a small amount of residual water in a machine, you can easily right-click on that tank with a pipette to get that water out. It can also do the opposite and actually fill a machine with up to one bucket of liquid as well. So if you only want to fill a machine with one bucket or less, you can use the pipette for that. With the bee smoker, you're gonna to wanna to right click this on a hive before harvesting the hive, otherwise the bees will actually attack you and they do do a fair bit of damage. This is made using two pieces of leather, a stick, a flint and steel, and tin. 
The scoop is what you're going to actually want to break down the hives themselves. If you just use a hand or a pickaxe, you're not going to get any bees from this. The scoop is made using one piece of wool and some sticks. It can also be right-clicked on a butterfly to catch butterflies. In order to get butterflies, they actually spawn near cherry blossom trees. And these are very obvious in the world. They're big red trees and one of the few forestry trees that actually spawn without breeding. Then we have the habitat locator, which is one of my favorite items. This is made with four pieces of bronze and a piece of redstone in the middle. You can right click it when it's in your hand, pop in a piece of honey and a bee and it will tell you the habitats that this bee will actually like to live in. For example, a forest. If you are standing in a cold biome, which this bee will obviously not want to live in, this habitat locator will direct you on the compass to the habitat. If it cannot find a habitat, like it can't right now because I'm on a super flat world, it will spin indefinitely. For example, if you were standing in the never and you're looking for a cold biome for a wintry bee to live in, it's going to spin indefinitely because there are no cold biomes in the never. Then you have the grafter and proven grafters. The proven variant can only be traded with or found in villages, and that's going to be the same with the proven frame as well. A grafter is made using two sticks and a piece of bronze. You can use the grafter to break leaves on trees and every time you break a leaf it will guarantee a sapling drop and this is going to be very useful when we are doing tree breeding. You then have unlit candles and these can be made in the carpenter with six beeswax and some string which will give you 24 unlit candles and you're going to want some water. I will go into how we use the carpenter and other machines later in this video. You can place that down and it will show you a unlit candle which you can use a flint and steel to obviously light. Eventually the candle will burn out and you'll be left with a candle stump and you can use the flint and tinder to just reignite that. Once you've then got your bees, you're going to actually want somewhere to house them. So we have an apiary and a bee house. The bee house is made with any type of comb, five planks and three slabs on the top. The difference between the apiary and the bee house is that with the bee house, your bees will produce combs. However, there is no chance of mutating them. So if you want to make sure that you only keep a certain bee, you don't want it to mutate or crossbreed, then a bee house would be best. However, the apiary will mean that the bees will produce and they will also breed. We then have three types of frames that will actually go into the apiary or the bee house. There is the untreated frame, which is the least productive then the impregnated one and the proven one. To make an untreated frame, it's eight sticks and a piece of string, very easy. An impregnated frame is gonna be eight impregnated sticks, which you can use by having two logs and some seed oil in a carpenter. And the proven frame again is only found in villages or traded in villages. So I'm gonna show you how to use these. If we come over here to our apiary, so you're gonna to wanna to put a princess in the top and a drone in the bottom. This bar is gonna go up and it's gonna go into a queen. We can then put in these frames here and you can mix and match. This is where you're gonna get your bee produce. So when this bar comes down to the end, this queen will finish her life cycle and she will go back into a princess and some drones. These tr frames will also not work forever. So the production on here means that it's gonna actually produce two times the amount of produce. You can stack these up to three, of course. The genetic decay means for ignoble bees, it will slow the genetic decay of the bee. For pristine stock, this will not matter. And durability, this is the durability of the frame itself and how long it will last and has no actual impact on the bee. You can also see here some tool tips. For example, this bee is not going to actually do any work because there are no flowers nearby. Each type of bee will need different flowers and we'll get into what those are later. This also shows here the temperature and humidity that it likes. It will come up with an error here if it's not in the right biome. That's where you can use the biome locator. And the bee house looks exactly the same. There are also a few new tree produces that forestry adds. These are cherries, walnuts, lemons, plums, dates, and papayas. Now, you will find that cherries are generally the only one you will really find out in the world without breeding. And these are from the cherry trees that I mentioned earlier with that spawn butterflies. The spectacles 
you will want to wear to see pollinated leaves. So these basically enhance your eyesight so you can see pollinated leaves. When bees buzz around, they will actually cross-pollinate the trees. And again, we're going to get into that in a later video. The Apiarist's hat, shirt, shoes and pants is an armour set that are really useful. These are made with woven silk. Woven silk is made by using silk wisp in a carpenter with water and silk wisps are made from silky propolis in a centrifuge and you'll get those at a 60% chance rate. Now, the apiarist's clothes are really useful because they actually protect against the harmful effects of some bees. You've got some bees here like a fiendish bee or a demonic bee. These are actually gonna hurt you if you go near them. And I think there are some like toxic ones as well. This is gonna protect you from any negative effects. Something else really cool that Forestry adds is cartons. These can be made by using four wood pulp in a carpenter, and wood pulp is used by putting some wood into a carpenter. Now, what you can do is make a shovel or pickaxe kit with these, and basically you will use a sh survivalist shovel with the carton to make a shovel kit, and these are actually stackable. So if you're out and about adventuring and your shovel breaks, you can have these that stack. So you could have a stack of 64 shovel kits, and you can right click to just use that, and it will give you a new shovel. So it's a really cool way of carrying around lots of replacement tools if your one breaks. Then we've got storage. So forestry adds a variety of different storage options. Firstly, you have backpacks and there are the apiarists, mining, digging, foresting, hunting, adventuring, and building backpacks. The, there is also the lepidopterists backpack. The apiarists backpack has 125 slots and this is for storing bees. The le lepidopterists backpack is for storing butterflies and also has 125 slots. The mining backpack is for storing all types of ore and gems. The digging backpack will store any dirt, cobblestone, sand, gravel, flint, and clay, etc. The foresting backpack is going to store any wood, saplings, flowers, seeds, mushrooms, and sticky resin, etc. This will automatically add these items into the backpack when they go into your inventory. The hunting backpack is going to pick up any item dropped by a mob. The adventuring backpack actually apparently doesn't store anything by default and does need to be configured. And I would assume this can be done in the config file, but I'm not 100% sure myself. Then you have the building backpack, which is used for building items such as glass, torches, bricks, stairs, fences, etc. Now, to make the simple ones, which have 15 slots, this is going to be four string, two wool, two iron, and a chest. And then you have the more advanced ones, which are the woven backpacks. And these are going to take the woven silk, a normal backpack and a diamond in a carpenter with some water. There is also crates in forestry and these are made with four logs in a carpenter and you'll get 24 crates. The crates can then be used in a carpenter with whatever item you like to store, for example, coal. So one crate will store nine coal. And in the same way that we had the shovel kit, this one will stack. So you can have a crate stack of 64 which will be 64 times 9 coal so it's a much easier way of transporting around larger numbers of items. You then have an apiarist's chest, an arborist's chest and lepidopterist's chest which will store bees, saplings and butterflies. To make the apiarist's chest you're going to need a piece of glass, a chest and five combs of any type. The arborist chest is going to be the exact same, but five saplings instead of combs. And the lepidopterist chest is going to be the same, but five butterflies. The butterflies can be caught with a scoop, which is the same item you use to break the hives in the wild. Next up, we're going to go on to power generation. So the first one we have here is the bio generator. This is going to use either ethanol or biomass to create energy. Very simple. To make the bio generator, you're going to need six gold on the sides, two glass and one sturdy casing. I will get into how to make these sturdy casings in a bit. Then we have the clockwork engine. This is probably the most basic of all engines. And basically you wind this up by right clicking it and this will produce a small amount of electricity. And you can see by the colors changing how more how wound up it is. And then when you let go, that's slowly going to wind back down. Absolutely useless in my opinion. The biogas engine is going to need lava and either biomass, milk, seed oil, fruit juice, water or honey. Depending on which liquid you're actually going to use in the biogas engine will depend on how the lava is used. So if you're going to use water, it is actually going to need constant lava usage. Liquid honey, 
seed oil, biomass or creosote will only need lava when the machine actually starts up and then milk and fruit juice will also need constant lava usage. Now, once you put in some of that, this bar will fill up and it'll get to a certain heat and then this will fill from this tank here and it will start creating electricity. The biogas engine is made with three bronze ingots, a piece of glass, a piston and two bronze gears. Next up is the peat-fired engine. You simply fill this with peat on the left and you get ash. To make peat, you are going to want to use a peat bog and we're going to get that into that into the next video. This will also output ash as a waste product. Then you have the electrical engine and this is actually used to convert different types of energy from different mods into redstone flux. Okay, so these are some of the basic items you're going to need in crafting your engines and also other forestry machines. First up we have the casings. So firstly we have the sturdy casing which is eight bronze. Secondly we have the hardened casing which is four diamonds and a sturdy casing in a carpenter with some water. Then we have the impregnated casing which is eight logs and some seed oil. And then the flexible casing which is probably the most advanced one which you're going to want to put some bronze, slime balls and emeralds into a fermionic fabricator. We are also going to need some gears. So you have the bronze gear, which is four bronze on the outside and one copper in the middle. A copper gear, which is five copper. A tin gear, which is four tin and one copper in the middle. And then you also have the wrench, which you can shift use to rotate blocks and machines, and that is four bronze. You can also store your liquids using cans, wax capsules and refractory capsules. The can is made with three tin ingots, that will give you 16 cans. This can store any liquid regardless of temperature. The wax capsule can hold any liquid apart from hot liquids and that is be free beeswax and you'll get four. You can then get the refractory capsule which actually can store hot liquids and this is free refractory wax which is wax with a high melting point. That actually comes from a simmering comb. You can use the simmering comb in a centrifuge to get refractory wax and phosphor. That actually comes from the sinister, sinister bee, fiendish bee and demonic bee and uh, we will get into these in the tree breed in the bee breeding video. Then you have the soldering iron which is a bit more of a complex tool. So this actually solders electron tubes to circuit boards and then circuit boards which you can see here can be used in a variety of different ways to enhance your machines and farms. Let's take an example. You have the basic circuit board which can fit one electron tube, the enhanced circuit board which can fit two, the refined circuit board which can fit three and the intricate circuit board which can fit four electron tubes. To make the soldering iron, you're going to want free iron and a bronze ingot in a carpenter. To make the basic circuit board, it's six redstone and some tin in a carpenter. To make the enhanced circuit board, it's going to be six redstone and free bronze in a carpenter. To make the refined one, it's six redstone and free iron. And the intricate one is six redstone and free gold. Now, let's take the refined circuit board and intricate circuit board as an example. You also then have your electron tubes. Now these are made in the fermionic fabricator and the recipe corresponds with the material that you want to get for your tube. So for example the copper electron tube needs five copper and two redstone. It will be the same for the tin one and you're going to want five tin, etc., etc. You can shift, you can press shift on these to see what they can be used in. For example, the copper electron tube can be used in manual farms for succulent farms, automatic farms. It's going to be used for succulent farms, and in electrical engines, it's going to reduce the output by five RF per tick and reduce intake by one EU per tick. The tin is for reed farms and will produce a different output in engines. Bronze iron etc. You can see these all give you different outputs. So for example when we're making our farms we may actually want to use different things. So when we go into if you right click your soldering iron it gives this GUI here and you can fit in your circuit board here. Then you can click these arrows to decide what kind of machine you're going to want to use your circuit board and electron tubes with. 
For example, today we're going to use the example of an automatic farm. Now, in farms, they actually will farm items to the north, east, south, and west. So, if we see here, we can see that our bronze electron tube can give us crop farms. And I'm going to say, in the north, I want a managed crop farm. If you put it east, it's going to put that in the east. Now, once I've filled this up, sorry, of course, the refined circuit board only accepts three, so we can only have three here, we can't fill up all four. Then that's going to push this down here and give us automatic crop farms, and you can see there's three installed on there. That is how you use the soldering iron. Then we have the analyzers, and these are really awesome. So the portable analyzer, there is a portable analyzer and a actual full analyzer. The portable analyzer is made in a carpenter up with four tin, two glass panes, a diamond and two redstone. And if we go into this, this is a portable genetic analyzer and you can analyze your bees, tr tree saplings or butterflies by the following. General environment, produce and evolution. Now you're gonna to wanna to put a honey drop in here and a bee. And you can see here on the Meadows drone, it says unknown genome. So once we put this in, it's gonna pull it down and then you can hold shift to actually see more about the bee because we've analyzed it. The species is Meadows. The lifespan is shorter. So this is how short the reproduction cycle is gonna be when it's actually in a hive. How quick is it at actually producing? So the faster it is at production, the more items you're gonna get in its production cycle. How quickly is it gonna pollinate surrounding flowers and trees? What kind of flower type does it like? How many drones is each reproduction cycle going to give you? How big is the territory around the hive? And is it going to give off any effects? Now, this does actually have an active and an inactive genome. The inactive one is going to be through bee breeding. And eventually, once you're breeding your bees, it can pass over to active. And that's when your bees are going to mutate. In the second slot, you can see all about climate. So you can see it likes normal climate. It doesn't have any tolerances either way for hot or cold or for humidity. Is it diurnal? Yes, which means it's going to work in the day. Is it nocturnal? No, the bee is not going to work at night. Is it a tolerant flyer? No, that means that when it's raining, the bee is not going to do any work. And is it cave dwelling? No, which means this bee must have clear access to the sky. It also tells you how many generations in captivity there's been. In here, you can see the possible produce and any possible specialities this bee has. In here, it shows you the possible mutations and you've got to find these out yourself. And then these are extremely accurate, actual genetic names of the bee. Then we've got the actual full-blown analyzer and you can put your bees in here, fill this up with honey, and it's gonna output them here. So this is a more automated version. Then you have the escritoire, which I think is the most ridiculous and unneeded machine in the whole of forestry. You put your bee in here, and it's like a game of match. You have to try and match it. And as you see, once you've lost it, you can't then do any more. So you have to take the bee out and put it back in and try again. See, here we have now made a match. This doesn't give us anything, however, because we've now got to match the other two, which we've done, and then... Ta-da, you've done it. This now gives us some notes. Use this note in your hand to gain its knowledge. Mutation discovered, forest and wintry. The chance for success is also higher and the new species found is common. So if you can actually do this, it will actually give you some really useful knowledge and you may also get a comb. So I can put this in my inventory, right click it and you can see here it says you've memorized the note and disposed of the crumpled scrap of paper. You feel more confident in your ability to breed forest with wintry to make common bees. Now. Sometimes this whole grid will be full and you'll be here all day trying to match them and it can be really, really time consuming and tedious. I think I actually got really lucky here showing you this example. I was expecting that I'd have to sit here for 10 minutes trying to do it just to show you for this video. Next up, we've got the forestry machines themselves and we have first the bottler. This tank here is where you are going to actually store your fuels that you would like to fill. Here is where you can actually put the input for cans and capsules. This is where they then go down and the bottler will deposit and store filled cans and capsules in here. And then this is also the manual input to fill this tank. Next up, you have the carpenter. Now, the way these machines work is you have these slots down here, which is where you actually put the items you're going to use. And this three by three slots up here is actually just for the recipe. So you put in the recipe here, you then put your items down here, 
And if you're using crates, you put that here. And then this is where you're gonna either have your seed oil, water, or honey. Now remember, if you have seed oil in here, and then you're like, oh, I want to go to water now, you can use the pipette to get that out and then put in whatever liquid you want. The carpenter is made with six bronze ingots on the side, two glass and a sturdy casing. Next up we have the centrifuge. Now this is gonna how you're going to extract your combs and this is going to extract the combs to the, give the actual bee produce, for example, honey drops. This will output here. This is gonna be six copper ingots, two pieces of glass and a sturdy casing. Then we've got the fermenter. Now the way the fermenter works is you're gonna either want honey, fruit juice or water in this left slot. You're gonna then want mulch, compost or fertilizer in here and any type of genetic material which is gonna make biomass. Now to make fertilizer, that is done as we showed earlier using appetite. If you use wheat, you're gonna get four compost. If you use ash, you're only gonna get one. Mulch is either made in the squeezer as a byproduct from squeezing apples, etc., into fruit juice, and that will give you a 20% chance to get that, or it's as a byproduct in the moistener, which is the next machine I'm going to show you. So, this is the moistener. Now, this one is actually a tad complicated. The moistener is made with four copper gears in the corners, a sturdy casing, and four glass. Now, the way the moistener works is you put in some wheat here and some water into the tank. Wheat is cycled through a working slot during production and slowly degrades from wheat into moldy wheat and to decaying wheat to mulch. You can also put in here seeds to get mycelium as a byproduct, and you can also use stone bricks to get mossy stone bricks and spruce leaves or any time of leaves into podzol here. So once this goes from decaying wheat, that will then go into mulch and that's how you get that. The creation of mycelium will require a damp and dark environment and the moistener will for that reason only work if the light is at level 11 or below. In addition to the mycelium production will speed up with deepening darkness. In very dark environments, the process will actually be four times faster than at light level 11. Then we've got the squeezer, which is a fairly simple machine. This can be made with six tin, two glass, and a sturdy casing. Now the squeezer is used to squeeze mainly seed oil out of seeds, as you can see here. You can also use the capsules to get your refractory wax back, but you only have a 10% chance to get that, and then whatever it's actually using in there. You can also do the same with cans. You have a 5% chance to get your tin ingot back, and it will give you whatever is in them. You can also get fruits and things like cactus to get water, phosphor and dirt will give you lava, or papayas etc will give you fruit juice with a 10% chance to get some mulch. That is another cool way to get mulch. Then we have the still. The still is very simple. You put in biomass here and it gives you ethanol. This is made with four redstone, four glass and a sturdy casing. Then we have the fermionic fabricator. This one is a bit interesting. You are gonna to wanna to put glass or sand in here. Once it's powered with electricity, this will heat up here. And once it gets to a certain heat, this will melt the glass into liquid glass. And the same way as the carpenter, you're gonna to wanna to put your recipe in here and then your items down here. And this is how you make electron tubes, which we use in our soldering iron. Then we have the Rainmaker. This is four tin gears, a hardened casing and four glass. And the Rainmaker is a really cool item. You can use this with an iodine capsule to make it rain. The rain will not stop until you then use a dissipation charge on the Rainmaker. An iodine capsule is made in a carpenter using a can, two honey drops, some pollen, and two gunpowder. The dissipation charge is made also in a carpenter with two honey dew and some royal jelly. Now, these items are actually made from more advanced bees when we go through bee breeding. You then have a rain tank, which will simply collect rain when it rains, and then you can bottle this up here. You then have a really cool item, which is the work table. The work table is simply a chest, a crafting table, and a book. And this will remember the last nine recipes you make in it. So you can put your items down here, put the recipe up here, and when I take this cobblestone stair out, it's then going to remember that I made cobblestone stairs. If you keep the ingredients in here, I can then carry on making more stairs. If I then want to make oak stairs, it can then give me the recipe here, and I can just take out more. In modded Minecraft, where we're definitely using a lot of recipes, this is really useful. You can right click the recipe to lock it. 
so that when you are using new recipes in here, it won't overwrite these ones that you're using. And simply right click again to unlock that again. Really useful tool, that one. Next up is the Habitat Former, and this is a really fun machine. This is made with two glass at the top and one redstone, a sturdy casing, two iron electron tubes, two bronze gears, and a basic circuit board. And what the Habitat Former does, if you right click, you can go into it, this once given power and a certain liquid will either heat up and humidify or dehumidify the local area. You can use this range here to select how big around the habitat format you want to go and also if you want to make it a circular area or square. And the bigger range you do do, etc., it will actually, I believe, use more power. You can put in lava, crushed ice or water in here, depending on if you're trying to make it hotter, colder or more humid or dehumidified mid yep and you can see here we can click that we want this kind of habitat it'll show the temperature right now and the temperature it needs to get to and how humid it needs to get to you can also type this in here and it will change you can also click it with a drone here and this will show you what the bee will want as a habitat for example here it doesn't seem to stay in however but you can see which ones it would like there is also a habitat screen, and when you right-click this, it will show you the current habitat. You can also shift right-click to link this to the habitat former, which shows in preview mode the position where it's at and what the current temperature and humidity is where that habitat former is. One last thing I actually forgot to show you guys before we finish this video is this is actually what you can find in villages. So this is a apiarist villager who here is trading wheat for combs. And you can find these bee houses which are really cute. And there is a bee house. You can find some forest princesses and combs there. And uh, if we go inside, there's also a chest with some saplings in some combs, some bees and grafters and an escritoire. There is also a arborist type of villager who will trade for forestry saplings. So that is it for today's video guys. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. This is one of my first mod tutorials so there probably is much to be improved on so if there is anything you think that can be improved do let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget we do have a discord server with actually a lot of other Minecraft players in so there is a link in the description for that and if you haven't already do click that subscription button and leave a like. Next week we will talk, be talking all about forestry farms. Thanks guys and I will see you in the next video.